In Creo Simulate, you can create centrifugal loads to analyze the effect of rotation on your model. Here I have a fan turbine. I want to analyze it. Before I jump into Creo Simulate, though, I'm going to modify the material that is assigned. I will go to the materials. Here we have the titanium alloy. I will right click on it and choose edit definition. Whenever I perform an analysis, I like to add in the material limits so I can take a look at the failure index later on. And so I'm gonna start by changing the units that this is defined in. And I know that megapascals is a lot more convenient for titanium alloy. This should be a value of around 240. And let me click on the OK button. And so now I have modified my material. Let's go to Applications, Simulate to jump into Creo Simulate. By default, I am in Structure Mode, which is what I want. So the first thing that I will do is make sure that I have a material assignment on the Simulate side. Let's go to Material Assignment. And right now in this dialog box, it's using the default PTC system material properties. Let me go to the more button. And here we have the titanium alloy that is listed in the model. You can see that we have our tensile yield stress 240 megapascals grayed out. Let me choose the select button. And now we've got titanium alloy listed in here. Let me click the OK button. And we have our material assignment. The next thing is to define our constraints. And I'm going to create a coordinate system, and it will be a cylindrical coordinate system. In a moment, I'm going to show you how I can't use that for my centrifugal load. So anyhow, let me turn on my coordinate system display. And right now I have the default part coordinate system. It is a Cartesian coordinate system. If I want to create a new coordinate system, I will go to the Refine Model tab. Here is the Coordinate System command. And instead of a Cartesian coordinate system, I will choose a cylindrical coordinate system, which is more appropriate for a model of this geometry. For the origin, I will select the default coordinate system. And you can offset it, but I am happy with it being located at the origin. There is the Orientation tab, where you can change the directions for theta and z to define its orientation. I am happy with this because if I zoom in on it, I can see that the radial direction is where I want, the z direction is going along the center axis of the fan turbine. I am good with this. So let's click the OK button. And so now I have my new coordinate system created. Be aware that if I go to my model tree, here we have simulation features. This coordinate system exists only on the simulation side. It does not exist on the design side and standard part mode. But anyhow, now that I have that, actually, let me clean up the screen. Let me go to my layers, and I'm going to hide my default datums because I no longer need to see that part default coordinate system. Besides, I've got the world coordinate system indication down in the lower right-hand corner. Let me close my layer tree. Now I need to have some constraints in the model. Let me go to the Home tab, and I will choose Displacement for my constraints. And you can change the name if you want. You could create a new set if you want. I'm going to select Surfaces, and I'm going to select all the surfaces of the hole. But actually, before I do that, let me change the reference coordinate system. Instead of the world coordinate system in X, Y, and Z, well, let me change to Selected, and I will pick this coordinate system that I just made. And that way I've got everything in R, theta, and Z. But now it's time to select my geometry references. So let me start by selecting the centers, or excuse me, the holes that go around the center. So I selected that one. It automatically selected both halves of the surface that represent the cylinder. I will hold down the control key and just work my way around the circle, just selecting all the different holes for where this would be restrained. So that is good. Let me pan it down a little bit more towards the center. And right now I have the translations in R, theta, and Z fixed. 
If you take a look at the rotations, they're all free, but that doesn't matter because these are going to be solid elements. And for solid elements, well, rotation for R, theta, and Z really don't have any meaning. If I was to fix them, they would be ignored during the analysis anyway. So let's click the OK button, and I've got my constraints. My screen is already starting to get cluttered by stuff, so let's go to our icon for controlling simulation display. Let's go to the Loads Constraints tab. I'm going to turn off the display of displacement constraints because they are cluttering up the screen. Let me see, Modeling Entities. From here, I can turn off the little tag icon for the material assignments. So I'll click the OK button. That makes things better. Now let's get to defining our centrifugal load. So I will choose centrifugal, and you can change the name of it. Let me call it centrifugal so that people can tell exactly what this is doing in the model. And we can change the load set. We can change the color of the load. And here we have the ability to change the coordinate system. But if I try to change this to selected, I'm required to choose a Cartesian coordinate system, even though I created a cylindrical coordinate system, which you would think would make sense for a rotation. Well, you're not allowed to. It's got to be Cartesian, so might as well go back to the world coordinate system. And you can define your angular velocity and or your angular acceleration. Here we have a drop-down list where you can define the components you can or the direction vector and magnitude, or use points to define a direction and define the magnitude. And here we have a drop-down list where you can change your units. By default, it is using radians per second. You can change two degrees per second. But I'm going to use RPM. I'm going to represent that this is going 10,000 RPM. Let's use that value. And I'm not going to have an angular acceleration. This is going to be under constant angular velocity. So all of this is good. I will click OK. And in that way, I have to find my centrifugal load. I'm going to proceed on and define an analysis and run it and take a look at the results. But if all you're interested in is learning how to define a centrifugal, centrifugal load, there you have it. But anyhow, for those who are still interested, now let's define our analysis. And so I will click on the Analyses and Studies button icon. And now let's go to the file drop down and create a new static analysis. And let's change the name of this. Let's call it centrifugal once again. You can write a description. I'm not doing this as nonlinear or with inertia relief because I have constraints. And I only have the one constraint set, so I don't need to combine constraint sets. Here we have our load set. For convergence, normally I run single pass adaptive to see if the model works, but I know that this model is going to work, so I'm going to jump right to multi pass adaptive. I'm going to crank up the max polynomial order to nine, and this convergence is kind of big. Let me change it to 5% convergence from the default 10%, and converging on local displacements, local strain energy, and global root mean square stresses is fine by me. I don't have anything to change on the output tab. You might want to dial down the plotting grid to make it go a little bit faster, but 4 is good, and I have no excluded elements. Everything is good here. Let me click on the OK button. Let me go to my Run Settings button. And for some reason, I need to check my config.pro option for making sure that I am allocating enough RAM. It went to the default 128. I like to use more like 8192, in other words, 8 gig, is that? Uh, and so that is good for the memory allocation. I'm fine with the directories for output. Let's click the OK button. And now we are ready to run this analysis. To do so, I will click on the green flag icon. Yes, I want to run with interactive diagnostics. And let's open up our study status so we can follow this along. And I'm going to give this a couple minutes to run. All right, the analysis has completed. It went through five passes, and I can see that it went to a maximum polynomial order of six, I believe. Let's check up. Six, so that's a good 
indication that I got convergence in the model, and I can already see that, hey, the yield condition has been exceeded for the material. So that's why I like adding in the yield strength, so I can even get a warning during the run if it has exceeded what I want for stresses. So let's close the run status dialog box, and then with the analysis still selected, I can click on the review results button to go right into results mode. And for window one, let me rename this and I will call this VM stress. And for the title, I will put in there Von Misi stress. Always good for ductile materials. And we've got our design. We have our display type of fringe, which is what I want for the quantity. We're looking at stresses. Let's change this to megapascals for the unit. I do like the Von Mises component. Display location, yep, I want to display for all. And for the display options, I like continuous tone. And for deformed, let's have it deformed. And I like to first take a look at a scale of one. I want to see real deformations. And now I will click on OK and show. And there we can see the model and we can see that we're going up to 267 megapascals for the peak, which is higher than the 240 that I had put into the model. And let me go to the view tab. I always like to clean up a little bit. Let's go to appearance and visibilities. And I will turn off the legend. Oh, actually I want the legend. It's the coordinate systems I want to turn off and the coordinate system triad. Just like to unclutter it a little bit. Let's choose the close button. So that is good for the stress. We can go to the format tab and I always like to edit the legend and let's change the maximum value to 240 exactly. Turns out it was right around the yield there. And that way, anywhere that is in red, I can see that's where we are probably getting some yield in the model. Let's change the minimum to zero and click on the OK button. And so now we have our nice whole numbers there and we can see the minimum stress and the maximum stress. And again, anywhere in red is an area that I should be concerned with. And part of the structural validation process is to figure out, hey, do I need to make any design changes? In this case, I probably do. Okay, so that is good for this window. Let me copy this into a new window and I will call this one the failure index or I'll just call it failure for the name. Let's change the title to failure index if I can spell today. And let's change the quantity from stress to, ah yes, I think I know the mistake that I made why I cannot plot the failure index. Let me show you what I did incorrectly. All right, I am back in Creo Simulate. Let me jump out of Simulate back into standard part mode. Let me go to the material and edit the definition. I forgot to specify a failure criterion when I entered in the tensile yield strength. Let me change this from the default none to our distortion energy von Mises, and then click the OK button. And now let's jump back into Creo Simulate and rerun the analysis and then take a look at the different windows. So let's go to analyses and studies. Let me hit the green flag again. I'm going to overwrite the previous files. Yes, let's do interactive diagnostics and I will let this run and then we'll jump back over into results mode. Okay, I am back. I have rerun the analysis and I've recreated the results window. Let's go to the home tab and then I will copy the window. And let's change the name of the window to failure. And let's change the title to failure index. And let's change the type on the quantity tab from stress to failure index. Yes, you need to specify a failure criterion if you want to plot the failure index. People tell me that they often like when I make mistakes uh, so that they can see that it happens to everybody and that's how you can recover from making a mistake. Okay, so let's select the second window. Let me go to the format tab and let's edit the legend and let's change it from a minimum of 
zero to a maximum of one and click on the OK button. And again, with the failure index, anywhere that you see that it is red is an indication of where you want to take a look at making improvements to the model so that you are not exceeding your yield strength. In this case, I might want to increase the radius of the fillet or maybe see if I can thicken the blade a little bit or even maybe take a look at a different material. So there you have it. That's how you can perform a structural analysis with centrifugal loads in Creo Simulate.